जय श्रीम बात रंजन बहादुर सुन महाराज की जय जय श्री भक्ति सुंदर गोविंद देव गोस्वामी महाराज Jai Shri Guru Dev Ki Jai, indeed, and Jai Shri Guru Maharaj Ki Jai, and good morning obeisances. Morning obeisances to our good souls from Brazil, from Thailand, from South Africa, and from the state of Florida, USA. Look how consistent we are with the bad particles. Exactly. Uh, A with cow that? must always be there. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, Guru Dave tolerated the cows. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually that really was his devotees, I and mean, Guru Dave. In one of his examples of just graciousness was it? Okay, it, it, it makes them happy. Then I'm accepting something like that. And the panda came from the Chinese devotees who came with Jiva Mani Prabhu. Jai. And see, you're being very un-Bengali with your fans. Those two fans that are behind you—they're Japanese, are they? Or Thai? Yeah, no, Thai, Thai, Maharaj. Thai, all right. Yesterday, no, the day before, but it feels like yesterday. Then we were watching, as we do, we're watching different things, but we were watching, we watched two clips of Srila Prabhupada, these like six minute clips, which is a series on the web. And he was in Colorado, I believe, one of the cities in America. Shira Prabhupada giving a lecture. And, but he was in America, I think it was Colorado. And he had behind him, more or less like you've got there behind you, a fan, but he had the classic Bengali fan. And it was like so happy to see, it. oh look, Shira Prabhupada is there, but somebody brought him that fan, which is a little different than that, the fan which just with a little movement of the hand, then you get a lot of air. So well, anyway, Gavinda Maharaj kind of wanted here to be everything Thai. He even considered to implement some of the Thai architecture in possible future temple in India. That's what he was talking about. So we kept it Thai, Maharaj. Okay, yes. And for the Thai architecture, here we are. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So uh, the Thai architecture, I mean, Paramananda has taken me and taken basically most of the devotees to some wonderful temples. Actually, even the regular village temples, they tend to be very wonderful in Thailand. And then we went to a very expensive temple complex. I forget his name, but so many temples. And from the very base of the pillar to the very top of the highest part of the roof, Nothing is left without being like very nicely decorated. And some of it, Paramananda can explain, and some of it is like extremely fine artwork. It's not printed off a computer and then pasted on the wall. No, and really, Gavinda Maharaj was taking so many photographs on his camera by himself. And then he, I'm just looking at him, and everywhere we stop. And he liked temples, so we'll just go almost daily to visit different temples around that he's taking so many photos and then probably I, I give him a look or something then he turns to me and said, Prabhu I am not doing it for fun I am thinking if I am to build next temple I want to use Thai style and he was really impressed and he liked a lot of gold and uh, how beautiful pointed roofs are so he was very inspired and then he I asked him when we are talking about possible temple manifesting in Thailand. I said, well, what, what kind of style would you like it to be? And he said, Thai style. It was pretty clear. He wanted it to be in Thai style. Maharaj, your microphone. Two places in the world, Srila, Srila, oh, three places in the world, Srila Gurudev wanted to go in his later 
times, I mean, his last times on planet Earth. And one was Thailand to stay forever. One was Vila Govinda here in Italy, come to come directly and stay forever. We don't know where to stay. And the other was Govardhan, Gupta Govardhan, and uh, not Gupta Govardhan, Govardhan, the, uh, the temple of Sri Anugiri Ram. I think and he did, Maharaj. I think he did also in all three places. I think he did. Hare Krishna. All right. So Nadia Priya Devidasi has joined us from Govinda land. So welcome, Nadia Priya And Dan has joined us. Ud Udaran Prabhu joined us. In the meantime, and to the rest of you, we already said good morning or good afternoon or good evening. So there we are. And West London Temple, Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Sunda Radha Giridhari Duke in West London. Ah, now I can see. Ah, big. Now I can see. Very beautiful. And very nice flowers they have there. So they're trying to compete with Vila Govinda for their flowers. Let us see. <laughs> All right, dear devotees, we've come together. We are as we are at the moment. Chat. Hare Krishna. Oh, yes. Hare Krishna. Yes, Dana. Thank you for reminding us. Let us always chant Hare Krishna. And let us begin. With uh, let us begin with Vanchakalpa to each, to each other, then to Guru, and then to Gauranga. So, dear devotees, we've come together Vanchakalpa to Rubias Cha, Kripa Sindubia, Eva Cha, Patitanam, Pavanebio, Vaishnavebio, Namo Namaha. To Guru, Om Ajnana Timirandasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chakshur Anmelitam Jena. As my Sri Gurave Namaha. To Gauranga, Namo Mahabaranyaya, Krishna Prema Pradayate, Krishnaya, Krishna Chaitanya, Namne Gauratuje Namaha. Panchatatvaranam, Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Garadhara, Sri Vasadi, Sri Gora. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, dear devotees, I know it's not a Kadashi because I haven't woken up hungry. <laughs> However, today we were going to have some theme about honoring Prashadam. So, it's good, it's not Ikarashi. That way we can think about prasadam and all of the, those good things uh, without our mind being guilty that, oh, today is Ikarashi, now I'm thinking about food stuff. But um, maybe Praneshri uh, I can also probably come across. Do you have it word for word for the? Sharirar Vijayadal prayer? Yes, Maharaj, I'm just going to put it here. Maybe. And I do have that Yuge Yuge, but maybe not word for word. If you do have it word for word, then that is... We, I was looking precisely for that one and couldn't find it. And Paramananda Prabhu also was looking for it and he couldn't find it. So we depend on you, Maharaj. Ah, okay. Well, I do have it here. Um, so, what shall I do? I put it... Oh, it even says BBBC. Let's see. Sharan Vijayan, word for word. And, and Maha Prashari Govinde. Um, Govinde, Govinde. So, I have these. So, I'll put these both in the chat box. Yes? Yes, and I put, will put another version because I have yours, 
taken from the Gita Valley, but then um, I got one from from the songbook, the ninth version, prepared by Sadhu Priya in in Australia. So I will also put it in the chat. Mahaprasadi Govinde. Now I wonder why I have two here. <laughs> and also I'm going to, uh, yes, the Sri Boga Arti, because the description is so beautiful, so be vivid. Um, okay, so please excuse me. Sorry, I was just clicking on these to see which one, which one is which. So now we've got these three. Now I just have to find your Zoom. Where is Zoom? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare. So first of all, let us begin. Quoted in Jaivadama Bhashila Bhakti Vinodha. So, first of all, let's just simply go through these again. And uh, Praneshwari has maybe something. Mm, okay. Yes, uh, so, let's go through, through these again. Uh, there are three verses. And um, as with everything, it's not all exactly f carved in stone that there also there will be one or two other verses. Sometimes uh, the knowledgeable you know, Bengali devotees who know verses, they will chant one or two other verses. But these are very standard. Maha Prashari Govinde, then the Shari Raravich Jadal, Jorindriya Tahika by Bhakti Vinotako, and then um, in, uh, sometimes he would sing, and actually some devotees like, all the time would sing, the um, Sloka on the Dum Dum Park wall, which is Yuge Yuge, this this uh, sloka. So, um, I do not know. So the first one is Mahaprasade Govinde Nama Brahmani Vaishnave Svalpa Punya Vatam Rajam Vishva Sho Naiva Jayate. Word by word from the songbook. O king, for those with little pious credit, faith in Mahaprasad, Sri Govinda, the holy name, and the Vaishnavas never arises. So Mahaprasade Govinda, Mahaprasade, Govinde, Nama Brahmani, Vaishnave. So of each of these, Svalpa Punya Vatam, Rajan, or Rajan is O King, Vishvasho Naiva Jayate. But it says word, or oh, word by word, but there is no word by word there. All right. Persons with meager Sukriti cannot develop faith in Mahaprasad, the spiritual food remnants of the Lord. In the deity of Sri Govinda, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in the transcendental Krishna Nama, and in Vaishnavas. So that will be the first prayer. And it mentions Mahaprasad first. And then the second prayer, which is Sharirar Avijjara. I don't have open. How is it? So, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Click, click. So Sharirar Abhidya Jau Jorendriya Tahe Kao Jive Pele Vishaya Sagore 
संसारे कृष्ण बर दयामय करी बारे जीव जय स्वाद अन्न दिल भाई शयन अमृत पाओ राधा कृष्ण गुण गाओ प्रेम डाको चैतन्य निथाई O oh Lord this material body is a place of ignorance and the senses are a network of paths to death somehow we have fallen into this ocean of material sense enjoyment and all this and of all the senses the tongue is the most voracious and uncontrollable it is very difficult to conquer the tongue in this world but you dear krishna are very kind to us and have given us such nice prasad just to control the tongue now we take this prasad to our full satisfaction and glorify you lord radha and krishna and in love call for the help of lord chaitanya and lord nityananda Hare Krishna This is what we chant so wonderful And then let's just go through each one the the last one of these on the on the wall in Dum Dum Park but it is not only on the wall in Dum Dum Park it's from back to the old taco So Yoga, oh yes, not yoga, yoga, yoga. Yoga, yogi, haya jaha, bhoge, aja, habe, taha. Hari boli, kau, sebe, bhai. Krishna, prasada, an, tri jagat, kore, dhanya, tripurari, nache, jahi, bhai. Shila Bhakti Vinod Thakur says in this verse, Yoga Yogi Paya Jaha, that what the yogi will get by his yoga meditation, the devotee achieves simply by enjoying Mahaprasadam. No hard meditation or hard tapasya is necessary. You must take prasadam by chanting Hari Hari, and by this Krishna and by this Krishna prasadam. all three worlds are getting blessed obtaining that prasad lord shiva dances in great joy tripura ri nache jaha pai wonderful so wonderful. we were reading these because it's good for us <laughs> and the point being we are reading these Oh, look, Shri Bhoga Aati, yes, and Prashad, let's say. Um, let me just download this. We're reading this because we are all coming from the fallen world. I mean, let's be honored. And so for us to do regular tapasya in this world is not recommended. because with fasting with like the regular kind of tapasya we are getting some powers but in this world for us to get any powers it is very distractive distracting us from what is krishna seva so getting any like capacity to do magic and to do other things which actually can come if we actually become renounced in so many ways to get these kind of uh, powers if we misuse it which we will because our inherent nature is that we are born in an in a exploiting mode so instead of all of this kind of strict stuff which the yogis try to do that they'll get some power like for instance Hiranya Kashipu he wanted to get power so he did great austerities etc but 
we want to get devotion. We, we are praying for bhakti, not for anything of this world. And Krishna has been kind to us to give us prasadam so we don't get distracted by so many secondary things which become prominent. And we've seen it, it becomes prominent when devotees try to do austerities and they get some kind of uh, capacity and then deviate from what has been given for our Krishna consciousness by our masters. And in deviation, what happens? Deviation then, the, the wealth of Krishna consciousness goes either underground or even gets destroyed. And instead, then sidetracked into other ideas of this world. So I'm just opening. Oh, yes, here we are, Sharira Vijayam. All right, so here's also word for word, Sharira Vijayam. Uh, sent by Praneshwari Devidasi and Boga Aarti. <laughs> this is a very happy song, I have to say. Bhajja Bhakata Vatsala. Shri Gaurahari, Shri Gaurahari, Sahi. Sahi Goshta Bihari, Nanda Jashona. Anyway, the merciful Lord has kindly given us Mahaprasad to control our senses. We have to eat, and eating is actually a joy when it is in service. When it is not in service, it is very untasteful. And maybe we are revisiting this because I did mention, I think, that we were looking for some verse and uh, looking for some recipe for um, a preparation for offering an indian preparation and then we're looking on the web and then we see a youtube clip of some lady cooking this recipe and then immediately she's putting it in her mouth and saying oh look now you see how tasty it is and it just so looked so like and it looks so wrong to us because you know, our whole upbringing devotional life is when you cook, you don't just go there and take one of the sweets. So in this case, it's making sweet, I think. And then you don't just make it. And then, oh, now put it in your own mouth and see how tasty it is. So I think this is how we came back to revisit this importance of prasadam theme. Praneshwari, is that about right? Yes, Maharaj. So, Prashadam Seva and Jaru Gopal Prabhu, welcome. Welcome. Good to see you early and very early in the morning in Limerick in Ireland. Dandavat Prabhu. Dandavat Maharaj. Hare Krishna. And Lynn also joined us. and. I'm not sure I've been introduced to you, Lynn, but I've uh, happily seen you in other Zoom yes, programs. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you. I was at the last meeting too. <laughs> yeah, yes. You're from Mauritius, is it? I'm from Tracy, California. Okay. Your few words reminded me of the Mauritius accent that oh. you're from. <laughs> California, okay, very good. Anyhow, you're very welcome. Lynn. Thank Have you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. So does anybody have any question about Prasharam? Actually, I would love for Paramananda Prabhu to say a few words. I haven't been seeing him so much recently, so we're missing your asso association, Paramananda Prabhu. And uh, I'll uh, invite you to say a few words about Prashadam. And I know you can because you've been with the relisher of Prashadam, Srila Govinda Maharaj, on many occasions. Maharaj, uh, in Russia we say, do not put the soul on the open wound. In English also, but what open wound? Meaning, 
Meaning that we're also missing your association. Oh. <laughs> and still I'm hoping here, I'm you'll here. be returned back to us. You're, you were on the loan, but they kind of preserved you. So we have to talk about it with the Villa Govinda team. Uh, okay, but uh, we know that the, I'm sending my representatives from here. <laughs> you will have them next month. Oh, in it's a, a month good try, month. but it's not <laughs> the same. But anyhow, speaking of Prashadam, I was actually looking all this time, I was looking for one verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita. And if you pay attention to Chaitanya Charitamrita, one of the vivid, the most vivid descriptions in Chaitanya Charitamrita is the different prashadam offered or brought by the devotees to Mahaprabhu. For example, those uh, Rakhaviri Jhali, the little bags of um, uh, Raghava Pandit. Actually, Raghava Pandit didn't cook them. It was his, his sister who cooked them. But somehow you got all the credit. And I was always wondering, why is Raghava Pandit, uh, Raghava Pandit getting all the credit and she's cooking such a wonderful preparation? So it should have been called her bags. But anyway, there's a detailed description how it's all cooked, what's inside, how long it can be stored, and how Mahaprabhu relished them throughout the whole year between the, between the time the devotees would go there for what, four months, perhaps? Before Atayatra? Uh, yes, Atsuka four months for the rainy season. Yes. Right. So he's, he's trying to make them last during that period. And when another bags would arrive, he will carefully ask Govinda to return the old bags and then restash the, <laughs> the other things. So anyhow, a very vivid description how it's all happening during Haridas Thakur, how uh, Mahaprabhu himself arranging that. All the preparations that offered by Mother, Sh uh, cooked by Mother Shachi or by um, Sita Devi, Advaita Acharya's wives, a lot of different descriptions of Prashadam. I was always thinking, why is this so important? And because I had no faith, I was thinking it's just food. We're talking about food. But then I read with some attention, I paid attention to that, uh, how uh, Mahaprabhu was so happy when after the Bhattacharya, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya conversion, and that happened, you know what happened, we don't have to revisit that. So Mahaprabhu, the very next day, or maybe a few days later, he comes with Mahaprasad of Jagannath very early in the morning. And according to the Brahminical tradition, you have to do your Brahminical duties. You take, uh, you chant the mantras, you chant the scriptures, you pay, uh, I don't know, dandavats to different directions. Then you take a bath, then you chant your Gayatri, and so on, so on, so on. It's almost half a day. Then you, you only then you can take Prashad. Not then half a day. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, <bro. laughs> Anyhow, he knocks on the door and Sarvabhama Tachari opens the door and he is literally in the gamcha. He just woke up, didn't take shower, didn't brush his teeth, nothing. And Mahaprabhu is there. Oh, Bhattacharya, you please take some Mahaprasha from Lord Jagannath. And without thinking, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya takes and honors it abandoning all the Brahminical rules and regulations. And that made Mahaprabhu so happy. And there is a beautiful verse. I've been looking for it and I couldn't find it. When Mahaprabhu is praising that moment and he says, my life, now I, I am in Goloka. I attained Goloka. I attained Vaikuntha. Just by seeing Bhattacharya developing such faith in Mahaprasad makes me so happy. And then I started thinking, oh, Mahaprasad must be very important. And really, what we're taking is Mahaprasad. We're offering it, and the remnants are coming to us. It is Mahaprasad. And also, reading that verse, the third verse of Upadeshamrita, Mutsaha Nishcharyat Dharyat Tattat Karma Pravartanat Sangati Gotatomrite Santir Bhakti Prasiditi. Rupa Goswami describes it. It's, it's perfect feat. We are not very enthusiastic about every service we do, really, we have to be sincere to ourselves. <laughs> but there is one service that is the embodiment of that shloka. We can say, we embodying that shloka when it comes to that service. Utsahan, we're full of enthusiasm. Nishcharya dharat, per perseverance and uh, conviction is there, full conviction. We have no doubt about it. What else? Stat karma pravartanat. 
we're following actually by offering prasadam, offering boga and doing following certain rules in doing that, preparing boga for the deities and the way we're honoring prasadam. There's also some duties to follow. And prasad will never come from a non-devotee. So automatically the bad association is avoided. We're not getting prasad or mahaprasad from non-devotee section. And then sadhu vritti, the association with the sadhus happens naturally because that's where we get prasad. We get it from the sadhus. And we're honoring prasad in association of the sadhus. So we can with pride say, especially disciples of Madhusudan Maharaj, knowing how dear is the Padishamritan to him, that oh, okay. <laughs> you master the, 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 the Utsahanish Sharia Dharyat verse by honoring prasadam. Full of enthusiasm, conviction, you're doing it steadily following the rules and in the company of the devotees. And then Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he also mentioned, he said that solution to all the problems in the world, literally all the problems, is prashadam. And that sounds uh, interesting and amazing, actually. And how is that possible? And then Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he explains that if, if every household, every person would offer their food to Krishna, and take the remnants. There will be no quarrels, no wars, no, no anything bad will happen. There will be no base for the conflict. Everything will be naturally harmonized. As he said, if we want to solve the problems of this world, please, you take prashadam and prashadam only. And that's how much Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives honor to Mahaprasad. So it's natural for us to remember that, the glories of Mahaprasad. And Boga Aradzik, of course. I mean, Krishna is paying attention to what is cooked in Brihad Bhagavatamrita. There's a beautiful, I mean, every scripture, there's a beautiful description of what is on the table for Krishna. And Maharaj, you probably remember when Gopakumar is Sarup, he's there in the house of uh, Mother, Mother Yashoda, and there's a beautiful temple. Baladev is there, Krishna is there, Radharani is there, some associates, he is there, he's a member of the family. Nanda Maharaj is there. There's a description of all the preparations. And then Radharani, she always brings something special to Krishna. And that time she brought Manohar Ladu. And Manohar means the Ladu. If you try that Ladu, it steals your mind. You will forget absolutely everything. You will be gone. And Krishna tastes that Ladu and then he, yeah, something is wrong with it. And he throws it to Gopakumar. <laughs> Gopakumar tasted and his mind is blowing. He's thinking, what's wrong with this Krishna? Why is he saying there's something wrong with this ladder? It's, it's in, undescribable. It's so beautiful, but it's just the past time. He's Krishna after all. He has to act like Krishna. So, Mahaprasad and Prashad, really, the most important seva, the most accessible seva, the most life-giving, literally life-giving seva to us, and nourishing both the soul and the body. And yes, Maharaj mentioned, being in company of Govinda Maharaj, whose, whose Bhakti Lalita describes as a foodie, but, but I would add to that, a uh, divine foodie. Foodie is the one who Mah Maharaj just described, that Indian lady who hooks on you, oh, how nice it is. Not even thinking about it, offering to Krishna. But Gurudev, he would only accept prasadam. So, divine foodie, that would be a proper description of Govinda Maharaj. He is interested in what Krishna and Guru Maharaj already tasted, what other devotees are tasting. And he was really into what other devotees are tasting. That's why everywhere he goes, he wanted to taste the same thing devotees are tasting. And I'm thinking about that, uh, that situation, really very uncommon case when Govinda Maharaj taking uh, Prashadam from a plate of his disciple, insisting on that, refusing anything else, but insisting on that right in the front. That is also inconceivable. What is he thinking? One time I'm, uh, I came with some one, one, one computer. Remember, Prashadam is not only the food, but other, many other things too. And Govind Maharaj said, oh, now this computer is out. I haven't seen it. It's a black Mac, Maharaj. Maybe you remember that there was a black Mac. And then Govinda Maharaj is saying, oh, very nice. I said, Gurudev, I can give you one, but another one, I will buy you another one. He said, no, no, Prabhu, I want this one. I said, no, Gurudev, I already used it, it's used. He said, Prabhu, 
you just increase its value. It is your Maha Prashad. And I only take Maha Prashad. I said, <laughs> whatever you say, <laughs> if you think it's Maha Prashad, you take it. So Govinda Maharaj, really wonderful just to be in the presence of Govinda Maharaj. You can melt his heart by sharing the same enthusiasm in honoring Prashadam. And luckily, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't uh, too, too big of a fool of refusing something like that. So when Govinda Maharaj offered me, I'm seeing him sitting actually on, right here on this bed, right here. And then his servant brought him uh, some of that muri with mustard oil. And uh, I think Ranaji, he just brought fresh sandwich from Calcutta. Think Do about I... it, one day, one day he comes to me. Think, says, I am you... thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> he says, Prabhu, I need to go to Calcutta. And I'm like, what happened? Really, he's in anxiety. And then Govinda Maharaj called me and said, oh, Prabhu, can you arrange a ticket for Ranaji? He needs to go back to Calcutta. And I'm like, what happened? And none of them is telling me. There's something behind. I'm thinking, okay, so they're not telling me. Why, why would I insist? Must be some urgent business. Then he flies. Three days later, he's back. And I'm thinking, three days? I mean, that's it? Then he comes with a huge suitcase and boxes. And I'm thinking, okay, so one... Uh, and one, one big bag, just a uh, just bag of stuff, like big one. And I'm thinking, what is that? I mean, what actually happened in Calcutta? And then later on, I'm coming to Guru Dev, and then he is here, he's opening all the bags and boxes. And the boxes, there are literally about 30 boxes filled with sandesh and different sweets that Guru Dev really liked from that famous store, Maharaj, you remember? <laughs> In, in Dum Dum Park, there was one in Dum Dum Park and one in Nabadeep, which particular stores. Uh, yes. Dum Dum Park, Maharaj. Yes. The Calcutta one. Yes. Yeah. And then that big, huge bag is just bag of Muri, but a special Muri, a very particular Muri. And then uh, the servant had to go to Nabadeep to maybe, I don't know where, you probably know, Maharaj. I, I know exactly where, yes. We used to. Okay, <laughs> go and get that so, to get that and get some other goodies. So the, the suitcase was just filled with that. So I asked Gurudev, so what happened? And then he looks at me and he shows his hand, Prabhu, this happened. <laughs> so he sent his servant to get all those things. And then the next two hours, it was a big Mahotsuf. He all asked all the devotees to come. We offered all the sweets to the Lord and actually, uh, I think all the, all the sweets were already offered to our deities in Dandam Park. It was already Mahaprasad. We offered something else to the uh, to Guru Maharaj and the picture of our deities here. And then he's distributing and honoring in the company of the devotees. And that was actually a big family affair. That was reminded. The part, big part of the family is to be, uh, uh, to be together while you're honoring Prashadam. You're sitting together and you're eating. But what you're eating is, you know, a regular family will just eat food and the devotional family, they will honor prasadam together. And that's what was here. So go up is there, boxes open up, and he's giving away all the sweets and everybody is eating, but one, one devotee is not eating. She haven't developed a taste for prasadam then. <laughs> so Gurudev had to insist, that was Krishna Priya. She doesn't like Indian sweets, I didn't tell you that. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong with that girl, really. It changed for her. So she's holding the sweet that girl, the sandesh, the precious sandesh that girl that gave her. She's holding. And the room is full. There are probably 30 devotees inside this very room. And everybody is honoring, but Gurudev is looking at her. And then he is pointing her finger at her and says, Didi, why not taking? And Krishna Priya said, oh, I will take later, hoping that she will just give it to somebody else. And Gurudev said, no, Didi, you take now. Now you take. And then she starts taking it. <laughs> Since then, she says, she developed the taste, but only for Sunday. <laughs> Nothing else. And of course, I mean, we can go on, Maharaj, but that, that little bit sweet rice is also mind-blowing. Like calling me out all the way from town in the middle of the working day. I was super busy. I tried to postpone it, but Gurudev is insisting. It's like a question of life and death. He's insisting me to come. And when I come, what is it? It's a sweet rice that he wanted to share. He said, it's so wonderful. The only fools will not appreciate that. 
And I thought, oh, I'm definitely a fool girl there, but I, I do, I mean, it's really a wonderful sweet rice. On the external level, but what he meant by that, I, till this day, I haven't uh, received that realization. What he tasted when he tasted the sweet rice, it wasn't just sweetness of the sugar and the softness of rice and the taste of milk. He tasted something more divine. And he wanted to share with me that taste. What I got, I do not know. Definitely not, not the same as Gaudiya was tasting. Anyhow, Maharaj, it's a big subject. We can just, you know, endlessly talk about it. And I'm sure you have many stories. And really, Madhusudan Maharaj, he has, you know, infinite, infinite storage of different um, glories of Mahaprasadam during the time of Guru Maharaj. Well, one thing that is in my mind also right now is that like the holy name, everybody can take Mahaprasadam. We only have to offer to the Lord, offer to a, a picture, I mean, offer to a, deity, to a deity or to an altar for us to offer to the altar with a photograph. This is the safe way for us to go. And... Uh, so everybody can take Mahaprasad. It is only a matter of the, the preparation, the cooking, the offering, at least the offering, whatever else you're going to do, but at least the offering. But then that will become the preparation, the cutting, the collection, the collecting of it. Even, even if you're in a place where you've only got supermarkets, you know, you go there. But what are you going to do? You're selecting things for the Lord. You're selecting things for his satisfaction. So every part starts to get involved with you know, the Lord's satisfaction. And so everyone can take Mahaprasad. It's not that only if we go to a temple or only in India or only if I'm wealthy or only if I know this or that. We know how to offer to the Lord. He's in our heart also. So he sees that offering. So like the holy name, everyone can chant the holy name. We just have to have a little faith to do it. Everyone can take Mahaprasad. We just have to have a little faith in making the offering to the Lord, making a prayer to him. And with these verses that we just sang, very traditionally reminding us of what is Mahaprasad and how important it is that our life be Krishna-centered. So this is a bit, another very practical thing that we simply, we cook and offer to Krishna and Krishna, please you take this and then give a little while, don't just instantly take, let Krishna have his prasad, maybe very little while, but something. And then we will honor that, that prasad in the mood as Guru Maharaj says, thinking how Krishna has tasted this. And all taste comes from Krishna. Where does everything come from? All tasty things come from Krishna. It is all miraculous. And here we are in Vila Govinda with this you know, really super garden. Again, everything grown from seed with devotional mood. But one thing that surprises me, that one moment it's just brown, it's mud, you know, <laughs> earth, whatever you want to say. And then within like two weeks, then from the same row, we've got strawberries, we've got peas, and we've got chilies. And we've got flowers. You know, maybe with, with you know, one month and not two weeks, but anyhow. But from the, same, from the same earth, you're getting chili and really good chilies. I have to say, you know, we've had chilies all over the world. These chilies, incredibly chilly, chilly, tasty as well, very good chilies. And the peas, the flowers, the fragrance of the flowers, all this is coming from the earth, from the same earth, the same water, but different nature, jiva, souls, living entities who are producing everything. Without that, if we get a clump of soil and we try to make it, the chili taste from that. I know there's going to be a scientist somewhere who's trying to analyze how to do it. But look at the miracle of, of uh, how it's already being done and so perfectly through the jiva souls, the living entities. So this way, everyone is being engaged in the Lord's service and the 
fruits and vegetables and the, the trees and all these things are all being included within that Sukriti uh, circle, the circle of Sukriti, everything that comes in connection with Krishna is getting benefit. So it's the opposite of selfishness. It is selflessness, giving that opportunity to these jiva souls. And so many things we can see. And so all of this miracle of how chili tastes, how the peas taste, how the all the different, the, the uh, strawberries, in the same road, the strawberries are there. And another thing that Manindra Mohan Prabhu here, he used to work on an organic farm before, before he was a devotee. And so he's got some you know, practical tips of how to do. And they put the marigolds in between plants because that keeps away maybe slugs or something. Okay. So... You know, this generation by generation knowledge about how to farm, not just or look up on Google which nitrate poison or which nit nitrate or which, you know, fertilizer or something you know, that you go to the store to buy, which is the chemical, whatever it is. Not like that. Pesticides. Right. Pesticides, yes, poison. And actually, Manindra, he said, because they really have to wash the, the cabbage. When we were having cabbages and things, they really have to wash them carefully because little bugs do go in there. And so you could need to wash them carefully. And then Manindra said, but in the supermarket, you won't find any bugs in them. And then he said, just think how much pesticide they're putting on those. You know, we're thinking, oh, we're vegetarian, green, you know, this, that, and green, 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 bio, bio, bio. But at the same time, the supermarkets, you know, they get sued or something if they got like one little, one little bug inside their vegetarian uh, uh, cabbage. So in one injury, he said, just think how much poison, pesticide they're putting on those just so that they look clean, absolutely perfect. So ours may have some holes in here and there. We've fed a few bugs on the way but we just have to, to wash them, wash them carefully, then that's also done with dedication. And so bugs also offered to Krishna Maharaj. Sorry, the bugs are offered to Krishna. Some, some bugs would be offered to, the fortunate bugs will be offered to Krishna. <laughs> we try not to. <laughs> but as also Paramananda said, Prashadam is not only the food, but it is the most obvious when we need food to live. But in fact, you see, even the clothing and, and all things in the, in the temple life and in, throughout also the songs we see, we give the new things to the Vaishnavas, to Guru and to the Vaishnavas, and we take their remnants, what they are giving. And so... It is completely different to go down to the shop and buy a new dhoti or a new sari. Then at Gaurapanima time and at Vyasa Puja time, Gurudev is giving out dhotis and saris. And he's engaging like Jamuna Priya. I don't know how good her judgment of which lady likes which sari, but he's asking Jamuna Priya which sari for this lady, which sari for that lady. And then that, that's prasadam, so the, it's coming to us. And so we never went to the shop to buy a dhoti or kota or something. It's always coming from, from Gurudev's hand. Because we were fortunate at that time, Gurudev, doing like this. And in the winter time, Gurudev distributing winter clothes, the chada, the socks. And so all those socks, the devotees, somehow think that Gurudev mm. needs socks. So the winter's coming, Gurudev needs socks. And, you know, maybe hundreds of pairs of socks, but before each <laughs> winter, then Gurudev distributing these to the devotees. Even socks are prashada. That storage room in Calcutta, all Calcutta Duranda Maharaj. It's like a clothing bandar. And that's right, and you see Gurudev is giving them away and as fast as he gives 
clothing away, it also comes in. But it comes into him, and then from him it is distributed. And what comes to us, we give to Gurudev. And almost always Gurudev giving back. I mean, Gurudev, because some devotees, they want to give something to you. Mahanand, no, I'm giving this to you. You can take it, you use it. Okay, then we take it. But then we take it to Gurudev and said, you know, such and such devotee. Anant, Ananta Krishna is one. He always wants to give devotees things. And he's giving different devotees. But we know we whatever is given to us, we're going to take and give to Gurudev. And then we'll they take it and say, and then Gurudev say, yes, you use, you use. This way. And on that, Note, you no, know, we go to evening programs, we go to programs in, you know, round and about house programs all over the place in India. Um, I mean, all over the place within the area around. And Gurudev, he also knows very well that the, the hosts are going to give donations to the brahmacharis, because that's what they do. I mean, this is, they invite and they're giving prasadam, but they're also giving some donation. And the first thing we do when we come back to Gurudev, maybe it's next morning because it was an evening program, Gurudev is resting, but the first thing we do, whatever donation, we come and give it to Gurudev, not for us. And Gurudev is very aware of who is not giving to him. Hence how the brahmacharis suddenly have a nice wristwatch, this, that and the other. Give away sign. But Gurudev didn't appreciate that. And, I mean, didn't appreciate that the devotees are going and not giving. And, uh, and Gurudev told that, in, that with Guru Maharaj, when he's going to program, he said, and I learn first when we come to Guru Maharaj, we'll give him the donation, then talk about how many people came, you know, what were the questions and answers, and this, that, and the other, and who came. But first, we'll give Gurudev the donation, and Guru Maharaj. So Gurudev would first give Guru Maharaj the donation. It's actually such, it's just such clean etiquette. Such clean etiquette. Everything is for Guru, Krishna. Everything is for above, not for us. So this prashadam idea, it is all helping us to reduce our exploitation tendency. And in the scripture too, and maybe Paramananda knows the verse, I don't know, there's a verse which says, and that we should, it's one of these favorable items for devotional service, right? There are eight, eight and then, or six, eight, 12, 24, 64. It means a whole list of what's favorable. And one of them is to offer what is dear to you to the deity. So we're all we're learning about being selfless and actually, I mean, we're not doing it so we get anything back. But the fact is, if we are selfless, the Lord's not neglecting his devotees. And if he's putting, giving us a hard time, it's for our benefit. And if he's giving us you know, nice warm chatter and all this that and the other then we also are accepting nicely but if we you know get having colder or less warm clothing in the winter then what to do also there's a verse in bhagavad gita Maharaj, krishna is saying yat karoshi yat ashnasi yat juhoshi dadasi yat tapasya sikaunti yat tat kurushva bad arpanam He's saying, whatever you do, whatever you receive, whatever you have, whatever tapasya you perform, make it as an offering to me. Give it to me. And then you accept Mahaprasad, and it's all harmonized. And I was just thinking about the statement of Bhakti and Thakur. The Upanishad starts from Vacha Vegam, Manas, Akroda Vegam, all the urges to control. Just by simple engaging in taking Mahaprasad, really. All of them are controlled, at least for that period of time. We achieve perfection there. It is controlled. If you take prasadam in a proper state of mind, all your speech, uh, anger, tongue, belly, genitals, mind, they're all under full control. So we should learn taking prasadam perpetually. 
in its different manifestations and forms, then everything will be solved. Okay, we, we've been chatting away. Let's give some, please, dear devotees, some realization or anything prashadam related today in any form. Yes, Pranesh. Maharaj, Maharaj, I want to share wonderful news. Bhakti Yoga for Kids in Russian. Ekadashi, Are Baba. Ekadashi Devi Dasi has been so sweet. This morning she sent um, some messages. And when I started listening, I was just, wow. She's so inspired that she is starting Bhakti Yoga for Kids in Russian next uh, uh, June the 5th. So I wanted to share that. And Maharaj special dandavats from Mohanananda Prabhu in Australia. Mohan Ananda Prabhu, my dandavat. You're on Facebook. I don't have I don't have Facebook on. He's on Facebook, right? On oh, the dear. other Facebook, yes. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry. Well, when I send you special dandavats, it's from the other one that you don't see. Krishna Priya yeah, Sokel, Narayani Nadia, sorry? Krishna Priya in Sokel. In Sokel, Krishna Priya. Yes, yes, yes. Stand about Krishna Priya. Yes, stand about. And uh, Narayani Nadia. Jai. And Gaurangi uh, Devidasi in Ecuador. Jai. To each of you, my obeisances to you also. I don't have. My Facebook on. I don't even have the internet connected on the phone right now. I completely forgot. Oh Sorry about that. So those of you who are, are on Facebook too, definitely my dandabat and appreciation for having your presence there. I need to put a bigger reminder for myself. I hope you've been able to join us, join and enjoy in the devotional sense. Our few thoughts and reflections about prasadam today. Hare Krishna, and really from all over the world. Today we don't have our uh, Rupanuga Prabhu representative of Russia, of Russia, of uh, Australia, Australia, but we do have our Mohanananda Prabhu representative all the way from Australia. So very good, Mohan. And Mohanananda, here is an example of somebody who years ago told me, when I reach maybe 65 or 64, I'm going to retire. I'm going to sell my business. I'm going to do business after that. I'm going to sell. I'm going to retire. And then I'm only going to do devotional life and like this. I'm going to try to do like this. And we've heard this from various devotees that, oh, yes, I'll retire and then I'll be a devotee. But Mohanananda, like to the moment when he became 65 or 64, he already made like the plan towards that, how to transfer his business, sold his business, left it all behind and engaged in so much savor in the temple and, and to the very day. So we've got an example for all, all of us, householders, wife, children, many responsibilities, our own business, so many things and doing so many things for others. And then following through that we shouldn't be trying to get pounds, shillings and pence all the way through to the last moment of our life. In fact, I was, I was with Mohan and Ananda, with some Indian, good, very good Indian people. But in his, he's trying to convince the, the grandfather, in fact, the grandfather who is still doing business, like saying to him, well, what? now is not the time to add more zeros to the end of your account. No, now, you, now is the time for, for giving yourself for Krishna. All your life, We've been engaged in adding zeros to our account, but now we've got to put the one in front, put Krishna in front, and the zeros will look after themselves, and that's now others' responsibility. Not, not that we're going to take that responsibility for looking after the family forever. Hare Krishna. 
All right. Maras, if I may, when Sheila Gurudev was in, in Caracas, uh, he went uh, once with uh, Sagar Maharaj and uh, Rashabdi was his, um, his, uh, his, his coca. And I, I met, they were staying in the house of Harikirtan Prabhu. And I was at the temple and I made a preparation. And uh, I, I went down to offer to Gurudev. And when I entered, it was, the house was very, very small. So when I entered, the scent of the basket was, was really noticeable. And Rashabdi said, you don't have to eat it. You only have to smell it. And everyone started laughing. That was for me just like accepted for Gurudev. Jai. I love that. I saw photos of Hari Ketan's place and it was small. And then I was thinking, yes, he's staying there. And Brinda Devi, when she was a toddler, no, not even born, right? I've seen pictures before she's even born. But she must, maybe she was born. Yeah, she must have been born when you went. Yes, well, she was little, little, yeah. a little kid. Yeah. yeah. She was in back to yoga for kids <laughs> in the family. I know. Well, she's we've got in two... yoga for teens. Oh, uh, yes, and she's now a teacher in Bhakti Yoga. And now she's a teacher in prison. I mean, and not she's in prison, but she's a teacher to prisoners, which is very good. She goes to the prison and she teaches cooking. But why teaching cooking for this? Always telling him about we must That's offer right. to Krishna. Take. Yes. Anyway, better late than never. I'm just looking at the Facebook, sorry about that, dear devotees. And Prema Sundri David Asi and Kate Kulish, who's many times with us also. And then, yes, the devotees and Raj Bhuvan, uh, in addition to those that you mentioned just now. So there also we see some messages from them. So to all of you on Facebook and to all of you on Zoom, very happy you having each of you with us. And Nadia Predidi hoping we're always thinking about everybody in Ukraine. I mean, all of our devotee section, of course, in particular. So we hope you're staying safe and everything is going on. And I'll join. I'll, yes, Nadia Predidi. I shall join your morning program soon. At least hear the, the morning kirtan. But I know it's still too early for that. But it gives me the sign when you're live. So very good to go and join the the morning program from time to time for me. And today is a good day because we're already online and doing things at this early hour. Hare Krishna, Udara Prabhu, Dana, Jin Jadugopal Prabhu, Jai Dev Chintamani, Seva Rupa, Leela Mohi Prabhu. And Leela Shakti, where's Leela? Yes, Leela Shakti, really, you're here. Yes, Leela Shakti, each of you. And yes, beautiful Ekadashi, Maharaj. Where's Ekadashi? Oh, I saw beautiful Davali. And now here's Ekadashi. Now grown up to be, a, to be a teacher. You see, this is the process. We are all children in devotional service. And let us be grow up. And as we grow up, to share that with others. So well done, Ekadashi, for starting this. And you know, you've got two children here, too. But Tota Gopinath and Veronica in Darvaneshwari here. So we've got two children, Rush, Russian speaking children here too. Paramananda Prabhu, yes. I wanted to add something about Vrinda since you mentioned her. Really, she is a wonderful example of how you offer everything to your guru. And literally, she would come, and Maharaj knows she would serve Govinda Maharaj with what. Um, all her capacity for months, she would stay in Navadvi. And naturally, when she comes, she goes to Gavinda Maharaj, whatever she has in the pockets, literally, all of that money goes to Gavinda Maharaj. Nothing is left. And then she's living on the mercy of the Lord and devotees supporting. And sometimes 
I had a good fortune of giving her some money because she's always broke in a good way. <laughs> why, why is she broke? Because she's giving everything right away on the first day of her arrival to Govinda Maharaj. And then again, I'm giving her money. And then next day, I'm asking, so Vrinda, uh, how about we go shopping, get something for you? You just got some money. I said, oh, oh, I already give it to Govinda Maharaj. I said, Vrinda, what's the point of giving me giving you money? You're giving it to Govinda Maharaj right away. Now, who is going to take care of you? So I was chastising her. But she is like that. And really, you can see, she did not die. She had no deficiency whatsoever. She was always well taken care of by the grace of Guru, uh, by, by the grace of Govinda Maharaj, by the grace of the devotees. But the mood, mood is very inspiring. So whatever we do, it's the mood that really matters. How we do it, with what kind of mood. So, good example. Okay. Okay, dear devotees, so very much appreciating each of your presence and may we all continue offering everything to the Lord, accepting everything as, as the Lord's mercy. And yes, Upadesh Amritam, it is not my stress, it is the stress of everybody. Gurudev, Gurumar, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Sarasati Tako, Srila Bhakti Vinod Tako, look at what we, the, what we sing every day all based on this principle, these principles. So, dear devotees, please continue happily and may the Lord, not only may the Lord, the Lord will always be looking after you. It's only we need to be able to understand that. So, we do our best, follow the practices and chant Hare Krishna and be happy. And there's a message in the box. Oh, from Lynn. Okay, thank you. Yes, Hare Krishna. So, dear devotees, Jai Shila Gurudev, Shila Bhakti Sunda Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, Jai Shila Guru Maharaj, Shila Bhakti Rokha Kshidha Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, and Jai Shila Prabhupada, Shila AC Bhakti Vranta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai, and Jai Kusha Bhagavan, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Tako Ki Jai, Shila Bhakti Vinod Tako Ki Jai, Shila Rupanuga Guru Bhagavan Ki Jai. All of our guardians, known and unknown, Ki Jai. Jai Shri Chaitanya Sarasata Acharya Brinda Ki Jai and all the assembled Vaishnavas Ki Jai. Nitai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bhagavad. Vancha Kaupa Tarubiya Stra Kripa Sindhubiya Eva Cha Patitanam Pavanavyo Vaishnavavyo Namo Nama. Dandavat Pranam one and all. See you soon. And in the meantime, chant Hare Krishna. Be happy. Do good for good people. Jai Shula Bhakti Ranjan Madhusudan Maharaj Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Time to go.